थैंक यू सो मच सर फ्रेंड्स हमेशा कहा जाता है कि एक से अनेक होने के लिए नेक होना ज़रूरी है एंड टुडे आई एक्चुअली फील दैट दिस इज़ द नेक नियति ऑफ एसो चैम इंडिया दैट हैज़ ब्रॉट ऑल ऑफ अस टुगेदर हेयर एंड एज वी नो कि ऑनरेबल मिनिस्टर सर इज ऑल लाइक ऑलवेज ही इज़ बींग सो बिजी विद हिज स्कड्यूल बट ही कुड टेक आउट दैट टाइम फॉर अस जस्ट बिकॉज ऑफ द नेक नियति ऑफ एसो चैम इंडिया सो विदाउट वेस्टिंग एनी मो मोमेंट नाउ आई वुड लाइक टू रिक्वेस्ट सर टू प्लीज एड्रेस ऑल ऑफ अस लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन श्री सुरेश प्रभाकर प्रभु प्लीज पुट यू हैंड टूगेदर फॉर हेम Good evening, friends. Normally, or essentially, innovation is possible only when you break convention. If you go by the conventional thinking, innovation will never happen. So I thought I requested a president. Let me speak first by breaking the convention, <laughs> because I know all these stalwarts who are going to speak. i will be overawed by their speeches as well as i'll not be able to add anything more than what they would have already said not that i'm going to add any value to what my good friend and the president as well as a very good point that you made so let me thank kaso jain for inviting me and i think we are really on a threshold of some phenomenal changes the world is going to witness not that we are not witness enough but probably what we have seen in the last few decades would be nothing as compared to what we are going to see in the next few years time all the pecking order is collapsing all the existing technologies are becoming redundant at a rate faster than they are being developed and in such context only thing that is going to be a reality is a permanent change that we'll going to see and that opens the huge possibilities because if there was going to be only one way that we are going to work obviously in the united for change we we'll just continue to walk the same way <coughs> but if there are multiple opportunities and multiple options then obviously there could be various different ways in which we can walk that path and can do much better so i think in that context the innovation is something which is not that we have to think about innovation but innovation will happen anyway the challenge is should we ride the innovation wave or we should watch the innovation wave passing by and then india luckily we have a prime minister who is probably the biggest innovator of the world he is thinking differently and that's a prerequisite for innovation he is acting differently and he is motivating several others to think differently i think if you don't start thinking differently there is no innovation possible and therefore the entire process thought process itself is undergoing a sea change and therefore i am very sure that indians will could become one of the leaders of this huge possibilities of innovation now if we could be then there will be a need a plan we need partnerships and therefore i am very happy that we are could work with asochem one of the top industrial association in the country which is headed by a very dynamic president and in that context those who are done well already they need to be recognized and that's what we are going to do little later reward and award them and in that context india could be as he said the leader of this innovation process because normally if there is everything in the order where is the scope for innovation my some friends who came from germany and he was saying he said i'm very excited because if just came from africa he said i'm very excited i was very happy in africa so i said do you like wildlife he said no that's the different thing 
I said, sure, do you like forest? He said, no, that's also different. I said, then why are you so excited? He said, in Germany, there are no surprises. <laughs> everything is in order. So when you have everything in order, where is the question for innovation? <laughs> everything is going to happen the way that is going to happen. So therefore, the opportunities for those geographies are far more for innovation, where there is no perfection, so-called perfection. There is nothing like perfection anyway. And those perfections will be the first casualty of innovation in over a period of time. But the beginning of thinking will happen only when we see so many gaps, so many possibilities. And therefore, India could be a big opportunity. We have several challenges and we need to address them. And therefore, we need innovative ideas. I'm very happy that a government has come out with an intellectual property rights policy, which will innovate, possibility of innovation. Because one thing is, innovation happens in mind or brain, I don't know where exactly, <coughs> but somewhere here, one of the two places. And if you don't respect that, and therefore we don't legally protect it, there is no way that one can actually motivate others to innovate. So protecting an innovation, intellectual property right is essential. And though we had trips where we had signed this and we respected it, but now the new policy guidelines will help us to actually take that process forward. It's of course paradox. India has innovated the best possible solutions for the whole humanity Zero. without IPR. Zero. That's one. What about yoga? Everybody can practice. You don't have to pay anything anybody. You can free lifestyle, lifestyle management. Nothing to be geared to anybody. So many things. So it's a, despite this, that we have always been the champion that we need not put the so-called tag of IPRs on something which is good for humanity. Still to help and enable all other top class brains to actually come and innovate in this place, we are actually done an IPR policy. Along with that, we need an ecosystem. Because IPR is an idea which can be born, but it should not have the same fate as we have the infant mortality rate. Because many ideas are not necessarily <coughs> taken to the logical conclusion. And that's a good thing. Otherwise, if all ideas are fortified, I don't know what would happen to the world. Because every human mind produces thousands of ideas every minute. So to take a good idea, before it is even commercialized, we need an ecosystem. And those countries who are the ecosystem, therefore are logically the leaders of this. If Silicon Valley were not there, I'm not sure how many IPRs would have been there in the US. China now, as is becoming the second largest filers of patents and IPR applications, has time to develop that system, ecosystem. So I think we need to work on that also. Japan also has developed an ecosystem. Everything is not as sophisticated as the other one. But ecosystem will be a, another very important ingredient of making an IPR policy successful. <coughs> and therefore, I think partnering with Asochem will be a great idea. Bringing in global players will be necessary. Finding out angel investor like my good friend Sandeep will be necessary. He has the money because he only can be investor. <laughs> so therefore, we need to find out how can we create that ecosystem. Because government has come out with a policy. Legal framework is there. But to take that policy to the logical end, we need to work on these issues. And I'm sure as we go along, we'll develop this because if you just wait for a first ecosystem to be developed and then policy come, it'll never happen. So I think the beginning has been made in the right direction. So I'm sure in the course of next few years' time, we will have that system in place. But while this is happening, I must congratulate the winners because they have done this despite all odds. They did not wait for the ecosystem to be developed. They developed their own ecosystem. Or they worked despite the ecosystem. And therefore, really need to be congratulated. I wish that, and particularly you are doing in the ICT. So this is another very emerging, top class emerging area 
information and communication technology. Therefore, I am very happy that you are going to do it and I wish to congratulate. As I was saying, India is a home to many new ideas and because it's a place where we are going to make the largest investment into infrastructure in the next few years' time. We'll invest something like $250 billion a year into infrastructure year after year because it's about just 10% of the GDP. So we are close to $2.5 trillion of GDP. So we'll make about $250 billion. As the GDP keeps growing, we'll have to keep growing more. So if you take on our next 10 years plan, probably we need to put something like $2 trillion into infrastructure. And that means it is closer to what our India GDP is today. So therefore, you can imagine the huge possibilities. But when we put that infrastructure, there is a tremendous scope for innovation. Why should we put the infrastructure in the same way that we did in the past? For example, transportation. We have noticed that normally when you said railways, first you must have tracks, then you must have rolling stock. The rolling stock must also specify to the same standard, which has hardly changed over a long period of time. The speed has enhanced, but still the model remains the same, rolling stock, tracks. Now the aviation technology, the new ideas that are coming in, Hyperloop is trying to develop their own ideas. That could make the entire infrastructure itself redundant. So when we are talking about infrastructure investment, you must think about infrastructure which is going to be relevant to the next several decades time. And that's the scope for new ideas to come in. We are tied up. Therefore, we said we must tie up for the best technologies in the world which are not yet fully developed. So we issued the RFQ. Six companies globally have shown interest and they will be developing technology in India. So the partly developed technology will get fully developed. So we'll be able to capture the value chain which starts with intellectual property rights. In fact, my good friends who have come from abroad will always tell you that the companies make best of money not necessarily by manufacturing, not necessarily by marketing. That's of course a logical stage because you capture the money only when the customer pays for it. So you have to make a product, sell the product and they recover the money, then you'll make the money. But the best part of your value chain is in the IPR itself. I, was, I always give the example of Nike, the best known product in the world. They hardly make anything in US, but they make the next most money, the US company makes the back job money because IPR, that's the IPR of a different kind of brand and others are with the company. So we decided that we'll make these products in India, but before that we'll actually develop this product in India. And that's what we are trying to do. We also instituted an innovation challenge. I set aside 50 crores for this. I appeal to all of you to please come and participate in this innovation challenge, which we keep advertising, publicizing. Idea is that we choose one or two themes and those themes we should, we expect people to come and offer some ideas. For example, we in India, or for that matter, most of the developed world, almost 2 billion people in the world are going to face a major challenge of access to fresh water. So water is going to be a major issue. Water and sanitation are of course linked. We cannot, today, we cannot think about water and sanitation differently. But it should be possible that we can think about sanitation without water. We need to think about odorless, waterless toilets. So we want to have a challenge of this kind. We need to think differently about the type of energy. Of course, these are all ICT, but I am talking about ICT itself is going to be important, but different challenge. So we have instituted this challenge awards, uh, challenge uh, participation, you can participate with us. And as you are mentioning IIT, with most of the IITs, we are partner as railways. And with which IIT, we have done a very separate, specialized MOU. For example, with IIT, BHU, we have done something for materials management. We don't realize the importance. The material is a starting point of any manufacturing. Can you manufacture anything without material? You convert material from raw material into finished product, that's the manufacturing process. But the material itself is not going to be available. How are you going to manufacture? And the materials, particularly the rarer, rarer, rare materials, are also going to be a challenge. But that's a different issue. But material per se are going to be issue. So we are done with most of the IITs and others, and we are trying to work on that. On ICT itself, we are working on ERP, Enterprise Resource Planning, which is going to bring in 
as per the experts like mr chandrashekar who was a till recently tcs ceo and now the tata group ceo according to his own estimation 60000 crores of savings are possible for the railways and this will be the biggest erp anywhere we have already started working on it we have digitalized the entire supply chain of railways so that's going to make life miserable for some of the people because right from order to payment will be through the supply chain so then they will be finding it difficult today today the file movement every file movement is a good monetary business also so that all will get affected but this is what we are trying to do in terms of using ict for many of these things we are also using geospatial technologies which is of course part of a broader ict family the geospatial technology will help us to identify many of these areas including using drones geospatial technology for unmanned level crossing so we are working on several aspects of technology applications in the railways so i urge many of these best brains who are present here to participate and find out solution to this problem and use of ict for this today's startup program itself is a phenomenal possibilities in this sector so i think i am sure we'll be able to work on each of these areas but i am very happy that as i said a prime minister has laid out a complete clear cut road map for most of the things and as you are saying whether it is 6 per 6 or 7% 7.5% 7 so even if you take any number it's matter of time in how many years will double that's only it matters but inevitably india's economy will keep doubling and as it doubles from 2.5 today it will become 5 trillion when it doubles in the next cycle whether it is 7 years or 8 years that's only question it become 10 trillion dollars so 10 trillion dollar economy is not a small economy and that is what we will become in the course of decade and half maximum and in that context you can just see the entire scenario how will it look like with 10 trillion dollar economy with now gst becoming reality even if at 20 25% of tax to gdp ratio we will have 2.5 trillion dollars of public revenues coming into the governments 2.5 trillion dollars which is as good as india's today's economy so just imagine that much of money coming in what are the potential that we so we don't realize so let us not get daunted by today's situation let us look at a future which is a reality and with all of you innovating that 15 year period can become even shorter that's because 7.5% becomes 8.59 and then it can become completely game changer and therefore <coughs> innovation is going to make india's march towards reaching this magic figure faster innovation can make life of people better and that's what it should be actually i think even ict we should use it for making life of people better and that always will make good business sense we always feel that business is a good idea but social issues are different if you address social issues through business product that's the most sustainable successful business model and therefore realizing the social issues and addressing them properly could really transform the societies and the countries so i wish you all the best we the president has soril businesses but one of the business that he has is also energy right you do with energy i remember very interestingly and i am talking about innovation one person came and told me i was a minister of power so at that time we had a challenge of power no power so people used to say you are very you are a powerful minister i said why because you are a minister of power i said you should call me powerless minister because there is no power <laughs> but then we brought one law electricity act which has created from 1 lakh megawatt we have jumped to 3 lakh megawatt almost in a matter of 10 years 1 lakh megawatt we added in i don't know how many years so in that context one person came and met me he was selling and then that time with the challenge was power cost of power etc this person was selling electricity at 15 rupees or 12 rupees in bihar he said how how can people buy he said there no electricity so people buy from me so he has identified a niche he is to make power from husk probably you know mr pandey was the person i think if i'm not wrong so if you have a possibilities of identifying the social needs and try to plug those social needs with a business solution with a innovative approach i think that's the best business model because like for example education there's a challenge say healthcare we need solution for healthcare and that ict can really help in different ways 
because not necessarily everybody has to go to a physically and a doctor has to examine you. That was old style. Probably different ideas can be made through ICT, what we call it telemedicine popularly, but something even advanced than that. And therefore, all of this is possible. E-education is something which has become reality. I remember the TCS, first CEO was Mr. Fakirchan Kohli. He had told me once, and he had showed me many years ago, he was passionate about it. He said, education is possible through this form. That time he was little ahead of his time, so people didn't accept the idea. But now you can imagine education is a social need, healthcare is a social need, transportation is, of course, social need, but also economic necessity. If you identify these sectors, agriculture, very important sector, if you identify these such sectors, come out with solutions through innovative ways, I think that's the best way to address social problems. So therefore, social issues will get resolved. But you will have a good business model. And these are perfect fix and perfect mix that you have social problems. So people will always be willing to do business with you. And a business will all keep growing because that need is getting addressed. I think this is what we need to think about in a different context. So it's a win-win reality. And therefore, I wish you all the best. I am happy that not having uh, known anything about innovation, you invited me. That's also part of innovation. <laughs> but you call somebody who's a novice into this field to call as a person. So I thank you for that. Congratulations. Thank you so much, sir, for your motivating words. And we need a little bit more patting on our backs by the award presentation. So I would like to request you please take a step forward for the award presentation. And I would also request Mr. Sandeep Jijodhia to please join in. And uh, let me please also share with you that our award presenting partner is Ericsson. So I would also request Mr. Uh, Manoj Davane to please join in for the award presentation because Ericsson is going to present 1 lakh rupees to every awardee and that's quite an alluring amount. <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen, the award is for all those people who are having the creative kiras in their mind, the people who have innovated. Firstly, in the category of social impact steam, the award goes to Ginger Mind Technologies Private Limited. Please put your hands together for them. I would request Mrs. Subodh Mittal to please join in along with the, her colleagues to please receive the award. I would also request Mr. Manoj Raika to please join in for this presentation.